Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today you join me and my good friend Pete from Petrolhead Tours and his gorgeous new daily. It's an M340i Touring, but as you can see, not your average M340i. Before we look at the car in some detail and take it out for a drive, I just want to introduce my good friend Pete. If you don't know Petrolhead Tours, there'll be a link in the description below. They are my favorite road trips and I'm sure the majority of you have seen at least a couple of my road trip videos. Pete, tell us a little bit about your M340i Touring. Um, okay, well, hi guys. Um, good to be back on your channel. Um, it is a 2021 model year uh, M340i Touring. Mm, this one has a few little options <laughs> over and above what people may be familiar with with the M340i Touring. Um, obviously, I went for the pan roof because Joe and I are very similar in that respect. It, it just makes a car like this. Um, one of the new options for the 21 model year was the M seats, so it has those as well. Um, another option for the 21 model year is the red calipers. You can now get those just by ticking a box on the options list um, instead of the blue ones because I didn't think the blue would go quite as well with this colour. Um, and when we're talking about the colour, so it's it's uh, individual peridot green metallic. Um, so obviously you talk about the individual colours and the individual individual colours. This is one of the latter. Yes. Um, and uh, the interior is uh, cognac, which is actually one of the standard options which just happens to go very, very well with this combination that you've got going on. So as Pete touched upon, it has the B58 engine, which we're all familiar with. So 374 horsepower. 374 PS, I think, and 500 newton meters, 369 pound feet. Yeah. Amazing. And this has the mild hybrid system as well, because it's the very latest yep. M340i. So very good running gear on the X-Drive system, as Pete touched upon. We've got that gorgeous paintwork. The gorgeous interior that just contrasts so well with it but obviously there's something else not the red calipers so much that are really staring at all of us in the face at the moment they happen to look like my 763 m's that have been sprayed gold but that's not strictly true is it now well i i've lusted after the 763 m since the first time i saw them um and again you know with, with the advent of the m2 cs and them being available on that in that lovely frozen gold um, I, I would love to have a set of those wheels. Yeah. Um, but of course, their five by one twenty fitment for the F series cars, and the G series, G series cars have a five by one twelve fitment for the wheels. So I couldn't get seven six three M's that would actually fit on this car. Um, I started doing a bit more research into like CS lookalike wheels, aftermarket options, um, and then I happened to come across the um, G series and performance catalog. And in amongst the carbon mirror caps and splitters and so on and so forth um, were 898M wheels, which are 5x112 uh, in, the right in the right fitment for G20 and G21 3 Series. Um, but they were only available in frozen grey, which, as nice as it is, I didn't think would suit the car as well as the 763Ms in that frozen gold. Yeah. And thankfully, my local wheel refurbishing place got in loads and loads and loads of like credit card size metal plates with different colors of powder coat. And um, I went through a few of them with a friend of mine and um, the color we settled on was called pure gold. And they really are pure gold. And they really are <laughs> pure gold. <laughs> I love the gold and I think I would have had gold on my M2 comp uh, if it wasn't for it clashing with the Hockenheim silver a bit. I think you've just absolutely smashed it in terms of spec and you've kept all the is it serum grey? What do they call this yep, now? Yep, serum, serum grey. So it's got the kidneys, the little air breathers on the bumpers, yep. um, and the mirrors, yeah. I mean, it, it was also on the M340i badge on the back. Okay. But obviously that's gone. Yeah, so it's debadged completely. Yep. The uh, the horrible M badges on the front wings here. Yeah, don't like those. <laughs> <have> gone. <laughs> I think what I love about this car, and we've just spent a couple of miles in it, is is to me it's, it's very much bridges the gap between, let's say, an M340i and a B3 Touring. And in fact, in terms of pricing and stuff, which we'll talk a bit more about once we get in the car, it's very similar in that respect. You know, it sort of sits between the two. This one's obviously quite heavily optioned. As Pete says, it's got the all important pan roof. It has the M seats. M yep, M seats. M seats. Yep. Head up, I can see the head up display. It has everything going on inside, everything you could need, but just absolutely gorgeous. I think what we need to do now is get inside out of this sort of slightly cold weather not that you could tell but pete wears shorts all year round when it's snowing when it's 
which yeah. it was this morning. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, so yeah, don't be fooled by his shorts. Um, we'll jump inside, have a quick look at the lovely interior, and then take it out for a quick drive. But I really hope that you guys do appreciate and love the way this car looks, because you can probably see and tell that I quite like it, Pete. Yeah, yeah, a little bit jealous. I'm a fan. Yeah, yeah. well, that's that's always <laughs> handy, isn't it? Uh, right, yeah, let's jump inside, have a look at the interior. Okay, Pete, we're inside, and I have to say, it feels really, really special in here. And I think, aside from the sports seats, which are how much as an option, roughly? Uh, I think 900 quid. Okay, 900 pounds. Yeah. So not cheap, but in my opinion, pretty much worth every penny. Uh, but the rest of it, the cognac is a standard color. And I have to say that Alpina theme that I was talking about on the outside, it really does continue into the cabin, aside from the seats, and well, the design of the seats, if you like. Yep. It's all fairly standard. I love this trim. Yeah, having had piano black and aluminium rhombicle and you know, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, the thing with piano black, as we've discussed before, is that the moment it's clean, it's 15 seconds later and there's smudges and dust and dirt and scratches and everything else. So I wanted to avoid that. Yep. I'm not a big fan of shiny wood. Yep. And yeah, having had that aluminium trim before, and of course some of this aluminium trim is there anyway, regardless of what finish you have, like like this stripe on the door. Yep. Um, so yeah, this time I went for the oak open pour. Okay. Which is this matte finish. It's, it's like textured. It's, it's quite nice to touch it. Yes. <laughs> so that you know, it just massively reduces the, the the shiny stuff and the and the matte black piano, you know, piano black stuff. Yeah. Um, and again, I think it goes quite nicely with the cognac. As you say, the piano black is just not practical, unfortunately. Um, and this stuff, you can see, it's it's much harder wearing, um, which is good for you because that kind of segues well into you've got a couple of kids. Yep. Now this car is essentially as much as it's a nice thing to look at and a nice toy to play with, it also needs to be a practical, which you've got, but it needs to be fairly hard wearing. So talk a little bit about the leather that's in here, if you like. Well, so actually this is the standard leather that comes with the M340i. Yep. Um, I did consider the Merino, which again is about a thousand man option, um, but the Merino, weirdly, isn't available on those seats. <laughs> so you can either have Merino with the standard sport interior yep um or you can have these seats and if you want these seats they're only available with either black leather yep or cognac leather okay um and i'm not a massive fan of black leather even even with a pan roof just no. it, it's a, it's just a bit oppressive yep um i know uh, our favorite uncle tony yep likes his red leather yes i'm not a big fan of the red leather either sorry because he's from south london <laughs> isn't he? yeah um i i tend to gravitate towards the sort of oyster white yep um gray um, I like that Tartufo, you know, the, the, the Tartufo Merino, which is, it, it's darker, it's like a chocolate brown. Oh, okay, yes, yeah, uh, yeah. But again, not available with the M seats. Okay. And given the sort of hard wearing properties of this leather, yep. and the fact that normally there's two good seats in the back there and a dog in the boot, and you know, yep. um, plus the, the fact that the M seats are only available with the standard leather, yep. it just made sense. To have it to, like this. To go for these seats. Venasca. Venasca leather, yeah, yeah. which is similar to Dakota, isn't it? It's like the, the newer version of yeah. Dakota. It's a yeah. bit softer, I think. But the good thing with it, with this over the Merino, is yeah, just that it's it's a tougher leather. And I've I've experienced that in a lot of cars. Like you can you can get in there with jeans and buckles and catch it, and it's just strong. Whereas Merino, yeah. it's brilliant, but it's just like any really nice leather. It, it tends to catch things a lot easier and it marks up a lot easier. That's easy to look after this. I mean, I, I get various cleaning products from, from people like Auto Creators who did my PPF and Tramic. Yes. Um, and literally a, a squirt of cleaning product on the seat and a nail brush. Yeah. And, and you just give it a little scrub with a nail brush and everything comes off. Quick wipe. So it, it, it's so easy. Yeah. Um, you know, once a quarter, once every six months. But when you haven't seen anything, this is one of one. You yep. definitely haven't seen this colour in, in flesh. No. Um, and when you're ordering things, the configurator is not always the best. Uh, no, it's really not. <laughs> it's really not, especially when you're going down the individual route. And even if a configurator is pretty good, like some of them are out there, you're still looking at a colour on a, on a, on a monitor, on a screen, and, and it's completely different to out here on a fairly sunny day. Um, so I'm sure there was a lit, well, there probably no nerves because you knew it was going to look good to a point. But I mean, when it arrives and you actually see it in the flesh. It, um, it completely blew me away when I saw it in the flesh. Yeah. I, I, I knew what to expect. And I mean, I think in reality, I actually set my expectations relatively high. Yeah. Um, and I kept on like trying to temper my enthusiasm and, you know, just, just chill. It'll be okay. Let's just kind of see what happens when it, yeah. you know, when it turns up. And the first time I actually saw it in the flesh, 
and the clouds kind of parted and the sun appeared. Yeah. And I saw that sparkly, glittery kind of undertone to it. Yeah. Um, I, I like the fact that on a relatively dull day, it's relatively subtle. Yeah. Um, it, it's quite a sort of understated dark green. Yeah. Understated. Um, it's, it's, it's gold, a... pure gold wheels. Oh, well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is that. Yeah. A few people have mentioned that, funnily enough. Yeah. But um, I mean, like, if, if somebody was following it in traffic, yeah. they wouldn't see the gold wheels. No. Nope. Obviously, there's no badges on the back. No. Nope. Um, it's just a dark green 3 Series. 3 Series. It's yeah. only if you know that, well, hang on, you can't get a dark green 3 Series wagon. Yeah. They, they don't do a green. Yep. In my opinion, the 3 Series cabin is probably the best on the market in terms of the infotainment, uh, the, the seating position, everything about it, the, the build quality as well. Um, everything in here is just, it's just brilliant. And I love the fact, and I do bang on about it a lot. I love the fact there's buttons here. Well, Actual I want there to be buttons. buttons. Yeah, I want yep. my, my seat heating on. I press a button and it turns on. Wow, yep. that's rocket science, isn't it? It's amazing. Uh, there's even a volume knob down here. So, um, and obviously, yeah, the operating system seven with a brilliant iDrive, you've got the digital cockpit, head up display, everything that I want in the car is is in here and, and in the majority of 3 Series. I just think that they really have nailed it. Um, and that's not me being a biased BMW uh, owner and lover. I really do think they're just, they're just brilliant. So, yeah, okay. Well, on that note, I think we need to take it out for a quick drive. Um, yep. It's just an excuse for me to drive this car, really. <laughs> Okay, here we are behind the wheel of an M340i. I'm sure I've driven one of these before, Pete. Um, but once, once or twice. Once or twice, yeah. yeah. But not for a while. And oh, I have very fond memories of these cars. This and the M340d. And if you ask me to choose, I think you'd probably agree they've both got their plus points and their well minor negative points, I guess. Yeah. Um, but there's no doubting that the i is always going to be the the car with the sportier sort of end of the scale if you like because it's got that b58 that likes to rev out when you put it into manual etc um, but the torque that the b58 petrol engine has kind of almost makes it feel a bit diesel-y in that sense doesn't it like it pulls so hard from so low down yeah um, there's minimal lag from I mean 1500 2000 rpm it just goes doesn't it so and that's part of the reason that you do get decent fuel efficiency with these as, as you've discovered so Tell us, actually, Pete, before we go much further in this video, just tell us, like, your past two family wagons. So, a few years ago, I had an F31 340i Touring, um, again, with the B58 and the ZF8 speed, um, rear-wheel drive, um, and as, as nice a car as that was, and it, it was a very nice car, the F31 is a very nice car, irrespective of engine, um, it, it wasn't a fun car. It was a fast, ordinary car. Yep because of that engine um, and obviously having had like the M235s and the M240s for work that the M performance touch and yes it's not a real M car um, but but when M performance get involved it does add a layer of fun enjoyment and excitement Spice. yeah to an otherwise relatively ordinary car um, and when it was time to replace the F31 340i um, there wasn't an equivalent um, in the 3 Series range, or, or particularly in the 5 Series range. Um, but what was recently out was the X3 M40i, and, and the fact that it was an M40i rather than just an X3 40i, yep. um, to me gave me a good indication of what it would be like, and then of course you did a video and I watched that. Um, and yeah, so I, I had my X3 M40i for two and a half years, and if the opportunity hadn't come along to spec such a special M340i Touring, I would still have it because it was a fantastic car. We've actually just come up to a temporary traffic lights and this car has switched off because the new mild hybrid 
M340i's, the M440i, etc. They have uh, the ability to obviously do stop, stop, but there's no, you can't cancel it, can you? You can't no. start, turn, start, stop off unless you're in sport. Yeah, or if you put the gear stick into sport, you know, knock it over to sport. Sports automatic or yeah. manual, whatever. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And, and, and I did talk about this in the first time I drove the first hybrid variant, I think it was an M340D it, maybe, was it? Or, or the M440i, the black one. That that's came, right, yeah. That one. And it's just so... Um, it's seamless. It's so seamless yeah. that you don't reach down here to turn the start stop off because it's just such a seamless operation because of the 48 volt mild hybrid system. So that's really good. You do also notice, I think the pickup is a bit more immediate with that with that 48 volt. It just yep. feels like it's a little bit, it gets going a little bit quicker. But let's just talk about the ride quality. So we're in drive now. It's obviously got adaptive suspension because that's standard on the yep. M340i. And with these wheels, I mean, it just feels fantastic. They're 19 inch. Yes. Yeah. Um, and you know, good tires on them, but the ride quality, as we actually came down to the filming spot this morning, it's a 15, 20 minute drive, and I was in the passenger seat, and I just couldn't believe how comfortable this car is. It feels really good, really fluid, and I'm sure a lot of that has to do with the fact that it has got better tires on than the stock M340Is that come with those very stiff, plasticky feeling bridge stones, which I'm just not a fan of. They're yep. run flats as well, obviously, aren't they? Yeah, well, so so this car comes either with Bridgestone or Pirelli run flats, right? Um, in the 19-inch sizes, um, but obviously because I changed the wheels, um, the the new wheels that I got came with Pilot Sport 4 S's, which is convenient because otherwise I would have got them anyway. Yes. Um, so I never actually got to drive this car at all on run flats. Okay, okay. I mean, it still does a good job because it has the adaptive and it still feels good to yep. ride. But in this one, it just feels very, very comfortable. Really, really nice. find out as well as we've still got the sporty character so we'll put it into what we've got here sports individual which you've got set up yep with which is comfort steering and comfort suspension brilliant which is sport engine and sport transmission amazing so you've got the pickup the urgency of the sport transmission yep. and, and over into sports just use the paddles here you put your foot in. I mean who needs a car a road car daily that's any quicker than than that and this thing weighs circa 1800 kilos i think just over 18 because of the um, 48 volt mile hybrid system makes it a little heavier of course um so it's it i think it's only about 30 kilos lighter than the x3 was okay um but obviously it's four wheel drive it's the same engine gearbox set up effectively but yep. yeah with the addition of the 48 volt mile hybrid and the batteries it's just it's just awesome and what i love is you knock it into eighth now we're doing 60 and <laughs> I mean, it's doing about 1200 RPM at 60 yep. miles an hour. Yep. So it's just sipping fuel. And probably 50 to the gallon. <laughs> and probably 50 to the gallon, yeah, for sure, undoubtedly. And it just, it just, it's just such a relaxing, nice car to drive. And in terms of individual paints, let's just talk a little bit about pricing and stuff because I've talked about it before on the channel. I think that Nardo Grey M340i Touring yep. of, of Tony's. Um, now this one, the actual, what's, what, what does the paint cost alone to option on top of an M340i Touring? In this particular instance, because it's one of the, you know, relatively unusual colors, it was 4,400 pounds. Wow, okay. So a lot of money, yep. but, a lot you, of money. You're not going to see another one of these on the road. No. Um, and I think that's that's the thing. And people, I know with that with that Nardo Grey, people are quick to point out that who's going to spend that kind of money, like on a three series, etc. And I I totally get the the differential of of the car. I mean, that's nearly ten percent of the value of a base spec car, almost yep. what eight percent or something. Yeah. And I get that it's a lot of money, but then. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, the M340i Touring, or M340d Touring, is about as good a package as you can get in a car as an overall sort of daily, come family wagon, come sporty car. So there's nothing really that's better than this that BMW offer that anyone else offers. So if you got to the point that you're like, well, I want one of these, but I just want it to be a little bit more special than my neighbor's one, yep. or my friend's one, then that's the thing. I think it's great that you've actually got that ability to spec 
basically whatever colour you want and now add these amazing seats and stuff and it just does bring the car up to another level again doesn't it it's just well as I said my intention wasn't to replace the X3 yet um, it's just an opportunity came up for this but you know what, what I had been intending initially was to look at either a B3 Touring or the new M3 Touring yep um, and realistically by the time I was looking at ordering another car it probably would have been when the M3 Touring was out next year yep um, or possibly even the year after um, but given the base price of the M3 and the M4, I can make an educated guess at what the M3 Touring is probably going to be. Yes. Plus a few options. I, I don't see the point in, in scrimping on options when you're spending this sort of money on a car. Make it how you want it. Yep. Um, this has got a tow bar. This has got the pan roof. Yep. Um, this has got the head-up display, and etc., etc. Et I, I, you know, I made it what I wanted it to be. Yes. I don't see the point in not spending a thousand pounds when you're already spending you that know, much money. On, on the flip side, like that GTS I had recently, the Cayman yeah. GTS, yeah. that's a car that you can just go, well, no, I'm, I, I don't need anything with that car because exactly. I'm buying it as a driver's car. Yeah. I'm buying it for the engine. I'm buying it for the hand. Everything kind of comes that you want with that car as yeah. standard. Whereas this, like you said, this is your everything car. Yeah. And so you want everything on it that, that that to a sensible level there's some things i'm sure that you haven't gone for that don't make any sense well i didn't get the uh, laser lights okay because yep. they're a 1500 pound option yep and because i don't commute like normal people commute to and from the office every day and you know i don't do a lot of driving at night anymore no nope. so i didn't see the point in spending the 1500 pounds for the laser lights and the adaptive leds actually come as standard on the m340i anyway perfect and they're brilliant yeah yeah. Again, something else very controversial in my, in my comments section. Oh, you didn't go for the laser lights. No. It's like, yeah, but like, how often do you? As good as the laser lights are, like you said, the LED technology. We mustn't forget that it wasn't too long ago that well, cars like that Mark IV Golf halogen lights, yep. and then the big step to xenons, and they were huge improvement. Absolutely. And then LEDs were like, wow, LEDs, you know, not, not so long ago. Yep. And yes, laser lights are better again, but. The technology in these headlamp units are just unreal, and and you're not driving around at night going, oh, I can't see. I've got, you know. No, exactly. Uh, so yeah, they're they're brilliant. I think you've got one of the best cars that's on sale today, if not the best package that's on sale today in terms of everything that you need in a car. Yep. You need it to be family friendly. You if, want it to be if a bit I was special. doing a lot more mileage or doing a lot more towing, yep. then I think I'd be looking at the 340D. Yes. But but that's about as far as I'd need to go. I don't think there's anything else out there that ticks as many boxes for what I need. No. You know, a, a car that's fun to drive when you're on your own, but at the same time it's capacious enough to deal with family life, dogs, kids, etc. Yep. Um, it's quiet when you want it to be. It sounds nice when you you know, drop the window and stick it in sport. Yeah. Um, it's comfortable when it needs to be comfortable, but again, because of the adaptive damping, when you put it in sport, it corners really nice and flat. Um, it, it, it just is an, an amazing all-round package. It really, really is, mate. It really, really is. Nice. Well, Pete, I really appreciate you uh, taking your time out and um, letting me drive this, as I say. Uh, lovely to see you as well, because I haven't seen, feels like I haven't seen you for yeah, ages. Long time, yeah. Long time. COVID. Uh, um, and hopefully I'll see you, well, in a couple of months time on the Petrohead Tours. Yep. Um, if, if that doesn't go ahead, I'm sure I'll see you not too long after that. But guys, make sure you do check out Petrohead Tours below. Um, and also they've, they've got an Instagram account. And in fact, <laughs> this is the picture when you got this, the picture of this, I think is your most liked picture. It, yeah, we've, we've, <laughs> we've got something like 10,000 followers on Instagram. We, you know, we've had the Instagram account, I think five years. Yeah. This is far and away the most likes and the most comments <laughs> we've ever had on any post, which yes. shocked me because some of the pictures we put up, you know, a, a bunch of cars at the top of a mountain, yeah. amazing backdrops, amazing scenery. Um, we have a drone for that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you featured in some of those photos. Yes. Um, I mean, like the top of Dawn Ray, you know, uh, top of Mont Ventoux when we've done the Dawn Ray. Yeah. That, that drone photo. Um, Stunning. Fantastic, amazing picture. So the, the fact that this got so much reaction, <laughs> so much positivity. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, really surprised me. Yeah, no, absolutely. But, uh, yeah. Nice, cool. Well, thanks, Pete. Appreciate Cheers, it. Joe. Thanks, everyone, for watching. As always, uh, please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and um, leave any comments and questions below and I'll see you at the next video.